in 2015, you were at the height of your career. You were the most famous fitness influencer. You started the whole aesthetic fitness trend. And then suddenly something happened in 2015, 2016, and your online presence started to dwindle a little bit. Can you tell me a bit more about this? Well, I think it all started in the, in the end of 2014, but I didn't accept it. I started having pain in my, my tendons, in the forearms. Uh, I remember that uh, I was training with pain every day, but I was at, at that point of my life, I couldn't imagine to stop training, you know. Mm -hmm. I was, th this was my life, you know. Mm -hmm. It's, it is my life now. It was uh, my life back then. But back then I was, it was also like my career. I, I was trying to go on top, even climbing higher tops. And I couldn't, I remember that I couldn't imagine even to stop for one or two days just mm -hmm. to rest. And uh, I was, I continued to, to train with pain every day, every day. I was going to gym. I was, I, I was, I had pains before. So I, and most of the time they, they, they just went away, you know? Mm -hmm. So I was hoping that that time is going to be the same, mm -hmm. but it was different because the pain was getting even worse, worse, worse every day. So in the beginning of 2015, I decided to stop. And I thought that probably I will stop for, let's say two weeks and the pain will, went, it will go away. It was even hard to imagine, you know, to, to stop for two weeks back then. But I stopped training, I started physiotherapy, and the pain was staying there. So I couldn't train for months, you know, weeks before, week became months. I, I remember actually that I continued to train legs after that, mm -hmm. because, you know, I said I, I would start, stop training upper body, and I would just train legs, I would train them heavier because uh, they were my weak part. And probably on the second or third uh, workout, my legs started hurting, hurting also. So at that point, I, I couldn't do anything. Uh, it was 2015. I started physio. Uh, physio wasn't helping. I remember that at some point, the pain in my forearms was so bad, I couldn't use my phone. I couldn't pick up a glass. I couldn't uh, use the mouse. I couldn't use the keyboard. So I was, you know, I, I couldn't do anything in life. And uh, at that point, I decided, okay, let's do surgery then because that's what doctor suggested you you're presented with the option to do either physiotherapy or yeah, surgery but I, I did physiotherapy for months and it mm -hmm. didn't help and uh i think one of my mistakes was that i totally stopped doing uh you know all kind of exercises mm -hmm. you know and from because at that point of my life i couldn't imagine to train at 50 60 percent you know i was always training at 100 and can you imagine like going every day to, to, to be the best. And at some point you, you, you go and say, oh, I'm gonna train at 50%, I'm gonna train at 20%, I'm gonna lift light weights. I just couldn't, my mindset at that point was like that. Um, yeah, so the physio wasn't helping. So the only option was to do a surgeries. Mm -hmm. And at that point I underestimated the surgeries because I never had surgeries before, I thought that you make a surgery and that, you know, doctor said after three months, you're ready to go. But they didn't tell me how important was uh, the actual recovery period. Yeah, so I underestimated the whole situation. Uh, even though after that, I did, I did four surgeries in a couple of months. You know? When was that? What year? Uh, I began the first two surgeries in the probably the, in the end of 2015 the beginning 2016 yeah and i was i was pretty sure that i was i am going to come back really fast you know i'm strong mm -hmm. i don't i don't care you know if if other people came back from that shit i can come back do me one after another you know this was also a mistake as i'm looking at it now um, and I started doing these uh, surgeries and I, I remember that recovery period wasn't going the way it, sh it should be. Like I was still having pain. Even though it was a slower process, I, was, I started going to the gym and um, I started to get my shape back. Um, I think it was too fast, I, I had pain, but I was 
pushing, you know, because that's the only way I know. And probably for six months, I got to a certain shape, which, uh, which was probably 70, 80% of what I was before. And uh, I couldn't do a lot of exercises. You know, I couldn't do the same weights as before. But I was, you know, still training. Um, then um, I started go. I, I started doing living the same life I was as I was living before. But I, I remember I wasn't happy. I wasn't happy because I couldn't be. I couldn't train the same way as I was training before. And uh, I was watching a lot of comments on on social media. Mm, you know, people wanted me to show how I train at the moment. Mm -hmm. But I I wasn't happy with the way I trained because let's say I was training with the 60-70% of the weight I w of the weights I was training before because I was always training as heavy as I can. So the I think the the, the size that I got back was mainly from, you know, muscle memory, you know. It wasn't from very heavy workouts. So even at that point of my life I I got my shape back like 80%, but I wasn't happy with, with my life, you know. And then I remember that uh, I went to so many expos. And uh, once I, I was in Russia for one expo. And uh, I saw one comment on my Instagram. So it was a guy that says, oh, you look good, but you don't look like before. It's not like you were. Yeah. Which was actually the truth, but I was mad because he did he he doesn't know how I feel. You know, people just look at you and they say, "Oh, you don't look like before the same as before. You're not the same." But man, you don't know that I'm in pain all the time. You know, and uh, that's what made me mad. And I said, "I'm gonna show them that I'm the best in this thing because certainly they forgot, right? Hmm. So I need to show them." I said, "I'm gonna I'm gonna go back." And I'm gonna start training at 100% again. So I'm gonna stay home. I'm gonna focus on my shape because I look like shit now. And after three months, I'm gonna show you how great I am. So I start training and doing the same stuff again. But this time 100%? At 100%, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And um, I remember I, I trained like that for, for three months. Not more, and not, not three months, but three weeks, and the pain started coming again, even worse. Like, it, like the pain in the tendons, it started spread around the the whole body. So it it went from your forearms to your entire body. Yeah, to, from the forearms to the triceps to the chest, you know, and it, it it was everywhere on the on the legs also. And at that point of my life, it was the, the probably the hardest because I went through all that shit with the surgeries. I wasn't happy even though I came back to some extent. And now I had to stop again because I know what co it cost me to, uh, to go at that point. So at that point, it, uh, everything was gray. So... When exactly was that point? Like what you did just described as the hardest moment of your life? It was 2017, the summer of 2017. You know, I decided to that I will be the, in the same shape again as I was before. And the pain came back, so I had to stop, you know. And the pain start, uh, started uh, spreading all over my, my body. So I was even worse than before. And after so many surgeries, I didn't know what, what, what to do now. Like I did uh, four surgeries. So what I have to do surgeries again, you know, I know what it cost me and they didn't help that much, you know, so what is now? I started, I was, I was desperate because I started going to different type of doctors all over the world. I, I was just, I, at that point I was making good money. So I, I was spending like this. I I just wanted to get my life back as you know as before. How bad was the the pain? Can you describe? Because to to me as a fan, and, and this is the image I know of you that you push really hard, that you don't stop, uh, no matter what happens, and you just prove that with your words. But then this must have been 
so bad, like the pain must have been so bad that you had to stop again. So can you describe to me as a fan or, and to, to your other fans what obstacles you encountered in your everyday life so we can get an idea? Well, the pain isn't like so bad, but it's it still limits you to, to do workouts because when you go to train, like it's tendonitis. Right? Mm -hmm. And when you go to train, it gets worse after after the training. That's the thing. So uh, if like if you go to train now, you know that tomorrow uh, you're going to have uh, yeah. worse pain, you know. And uh, the thing is that I had it all over my body, so it was limiting for me for, for everything. You know, I couldn't do anything in the gym. That, that, that was the problem. And uh, once, for me, one, once I stopped going to the gym, uh, it was totally depression. You know, I didn't know what to do with my life. That, that was the hard part because I realized that all my life I was doing sports, you know. And this is the only way I know to live, to wake up every morning and to, you know, chase my dreams, to, to try and become better than yesterday. And once I had this, all these problems, I couldn't do this anymore. So I didn't know why, why should I live? What's the point of everything? So you started questioning what's the point of life? Oh, I can say that to me at that point, I, I felt like I'm dead. And that's it. Like, I don't, I don't feel like I'm living, you know? I, I didn't feel that I'm alive. I, when I was watching social media, I see all these people going to gym, which made me, like, very depressed. Like, I, I'm looking at them and I'm like, oh, they don't realize what they have. I, I'm dreaming for this, you know? I want to have this health so I can go to the gym. This is the only thing I know. that That's the thing that I live for. And... I was I was I was depressed. I wasn't going out. I I you know my body wasn't looking the same as it was looking before. And uh, n with all this popularity that I had at the moment, I was trying to hide myself because I was I was ash ashamed of what I was. I was uh, I never went to the beach because you know I was ashamed that probably someone would recognize me and say. Yeah, Look how it look. Look how he looks now. How long is the that period that you had to go through, like the hard one? The very hard one. It was like two years since 2017 till the beginning of 2020. And the, um, I think 2020 it was really hard for everyone, but for me it was perfect. You know, I I felt that I'm alive again. You know. Well, why was that? What what changed? Oh. Uh, I don't know, like my mentality changed. I have, I had less pain, so I started going to gym. Even, even though it's not 100%, I, under, I, I realized that the most important thing for me is to, to feel that I'm doing something for myself and for my body. You know, that I'm, that I'm, that I'm trying to progress every day. You know, this, this thing is what keeps me alive. But. I can say that uh, in, in 2018 it was the, the probably the hardest part because I had another surgery on my on my leg. So my leg was was open, you know. I had very big surgery with um, cartilage replacement. Okay. Yeah. At the same time, I had pain on my hips. Wow. Yeah. And at the same time, I developed a, a condition which is called coccydemia which uh, you have pain on the tailbone. I can't lay on my back, you know. I can't uh, sit without a certain, with a pillow, special pillow. Wow. Okay, and I had this at the same time. And um, I couldn't sleep because I didn't have a position to sleep on. You know, when I'm on my side, my hip hurts, my both hips, you know. When on my on my back, my tailbone hurts. When I'm on my front, you know, my knee hurts because I have a surgery. And I was sleeping on uh, these uh, painkillers for months just be because I couldn't relax, you know. And when you're like this, your nervous system to like to feel pain all the time and to have not a single moment that you can relax because you don't have pain, it just drives you crazy. And I remember at some point I was, you know, 
the pain was so bad and I couldn't relax, I started hitting my head in the wall. I, I didn't know what, why I was doing it, but it just I wanted the pain to be somewhere else, you know? And I started laughing for no reason. I was just staying at home for months like this, and I was doing this thing. And I said, at that point, I, I thought that I'm going crazy. So this is when I decided to go to, you know, therapist, at least so I can, because I, I certainly thought that I'm going crazy, you know, because all of these things. And, and you talk with the, with, the, with the therapist? I started going to therapists. Uh, I went to three therapists and to the first two, they didn't help me. <clears throat> the third one, maybe because he was man and he understood me more, he, he helped me in some way. I started feeling more, I don't know, more confident because the also the, the thing was that during these times I lost my confidence. I, like I didn't have confidence at all. I lost, I, I never had confidence. I, I didn't know who I was. And uh, I remember when when I started going to the gym, when I started doing business with, this, with uh, fitness and everything, I was becoming more and more confident, you know, because things start to work your way. Uh, and you feel that you can handle everything. And at some point in my life, because before this thing happened, I was very confident that I can fix everything. If I have problem, I fix it. I, I, can, I can do everything. You feel strong, you, think, you feel confident, but when all these things happened, I, I realized that I can't, not everything's up to me, you know, and all, all my health problems I couldn't handle. So this is how I slowly started to lose my confidence. I, was, I wasn't that confident anymore. I remember that before that, uh, when I see, you know, comments of haters on, on social media, I, I was just happy, you know, I didn't care. But after that, if, if I see a negative comment, I was like, I don't know. I, I didn't like it. I was, I, I was hurt, you know, because I realized these guys don't know what's my situation and they, they are speaking back to me, you know. And um, I was hiding, all, you know, probably most of the people, they will be like, uh, why didn't you tell this, all, all this thing? It's because at that point I didn't have the strength to say it. I, I, I'm just honest. I felt like I'm shit. I'm the most miserable person on earth, and I I didn't have the strength to say it. It takes a tremendous amount of courage to come out and say it now. So what made you want to share this story now, besides having the strength and having the courage now to share all of this? Because I was, I was, I always knew that at some point I I'm gonna say all these things, but I just wanted to feel more, more strong, you know, stronger. Because I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, like two years ago, I was so fucked up. I didn't, I didn't want to live, you know. I felt like I'm dead, you know, exactly like this. I felt like I'm dead. Everything, like, everything was gray, meaningless, you know. Did I you have I, suicidal thoughts? Yes, I was. Uh, many times I had suicidal thoughts. And you know I, what I was thinking? While I was going um, on the plane to see a, another doctor, you know, I was traveling a lot. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm on the plane and I'm saying like, oh, like if the plane fell down, you know, I didn't care. Probably all these people are going to be, ah, you know, they're going to be <laughs> crazy because the plane is falling. I'm going to be, I don't care. You know, so, yeah. So you lived through all this. Here you are sharing the story. You conquered the biggest battle of your life. I'm not sure how many people would be able to come through all of this and uh, be so positive. Because actually right now you, you look really positive uh, uh, during this, this talk. So w what's the future? You, you battled through this. So what's the future for Lazar Angelov? Oh, future, I don't know. I'm just trying to live my life at the moment. I don't I don't think about the future that much, if I have to be honest. So you're not trying to be 
a hundred percent again in terms of your physique? I'm you try trying, mm-hmm. but uh, I don't push things like I was pushing them before. I'm trying to focus on other things because I'm gonna tell you exactly how I was thinking before that. I was, you know, the, the therapist they made me realize this thing. I was totally uh, moved by my ambition, nothing else. I was living because of my ambition. And I, I know that people never understood the way I live because I was always dedicated to the thing I do. And to me, all the other things didn't exist, you know, girlfriend, nothing, nothing else, you know, to me, success was the only thing I knew. And I was living to be successful. And once I lo- lost this ambition, uh, I, it's like, I felt like I lost everything. Like, I don't have reason to live anymore. And, so and I'm now, trying not to be like this. I found, I'm not overthinking. I'm not so, I'm trying to find other things besides lifting weights and trying to be the best at this thing, you know. You're just having fun. Um, yeah, I, I started having fun. Like, f- there there was one thing that uh, I was so ashamed of myself that in the summertime I was going with a uh, tracksuit, you know, before that, because I was ashamed of my body. And uh, l- last year, you know, I started to lift weights, you know. I I don't look like I, I looked before, but I look like uh, at least like a person that goes to the gym a little bit, you know. <laughs> So I had this courage to go to to start having fun and, uh, you know, uh, I got a girlfriend. So, so she, she took me to the seaside and I saw things that I ha- haven't seen in years, you know. Yeah. How, how did that make you feel going to, to the seaside finally, seeing what's up around town, so to speak? Mm, it, it just made me feel alive again. It start, I started to have my confidence back, like it, it feels good, you know. Even at some point, I started to become overconfident, you know, because once you overcome something hard in your life, you become more confident. This is how I think. It's true. It's true. But but this time, I feel like you're wiser and you know not to push too much, even though you yeah, gained actually, your confidence. Yeah, actually, I was very, very stupid. Like, I didn't know many things before. And this is the, the, the way I grew up, because I was... I was I grew up with these magazines and uh, articles. I was reading with uh, successful athletes, people. They was always telling you need to give more. You need to be the best. You need to you need to do stuff that other people don't dare to do. So this is what I was doing. You know, even uh, like you know, I, I watched Kobe Bryant, so he was crazy in this uh, work mentality. You know, so I was trying to do crazy stuff like this. You need to outwork everyone. This was my mentality. You sure did for a long while. And um, I feel like th- this was kind of like the image you presented, that you're the one that you would work the hardest. You would push whenever someone else is, is uh, slacking or not doing uh, as much as you. And then you kind of faded away. But now we have the story. Now we know that you didn't stop because you just lost your ambition. It was your ambition that kind of led you down this path and you went through all of this, which was uh, admittedly extremely hard. I can see how your expression changes, but I feel like you have this wisdom now to go forward and and be stronger than before. Yeah, I think so, but you don't know what, what, I mean, the time will show, you know, you don't, I don't know what's going to happen, but yes, I'm wiser and uh, I know how to handle things and now now after all this thing i started realizing things in the past and where i did wrong because when you are i'm going to tell you exactly uh, when i was in this social media bubble and i want try i was trying to be the the best in this mm-hmm. thing uh, i was trying to have the most ecstatic body you know um, i was trying to be the most popular you don't see the outside how you know, you don't see the other stuff you know why do you do it? Is it right? Is it wrong? You know, I just push without knowing why. And, and you achieved it. You achieved it for sure uh, up until 
a point, as, as you mentioned. But uh, what I'm trying to get at right now is you have this wisdom now. So you're in front of all your fans at the moment uh, and me as a fan of you as well. What would you like to say after coming through all of this? If you had like one or two pieces of advice that you would like to give. Oh, I, I know that many people right now are probably in the same situation that I was before and that, that they don't see a reason to live. That uh, I know that even many kids now have depression and stuff like that. I just want to tell them that uh, not to give up, you know, just you need to be patient and at some point you're going you're gonna to get out of this shit.